Motor Week is made possible by Rock Auto and Tire Rack. Well, hello and welcome to Motor Week 92. We're glad to have you with us. It's summer again, and that means time for Motor Week to test convertibles. The latest ragtop to enter the market is this sporty 240SX convertible from Nissan. We've had good things to say about the 240SX Coupe ever since it debuted in 1989. We've been especially fond of its fine handling. But any time that you remove a sports car's top, you risk destroying its handling. So we approach the soft top 240 with a certain apprehension. Would it still be the quick, nimble 240SX that we know and love? Or has Nissan traded go for show? Chopping the top off certainly hasn't robbed the 240SX of its sporty good looks. The sturdy soft top made by ASC blends nicely with the 240's flowing lines, so owners needn't worry about how the car looks when fully clothed. As with many convertibles, rearward visibility is compromised by rather large blind spots and the soft plastic rear window lacks any defrosting capability. But it's life with the top down that matters here, and getting it that way is reasonably simple. Lower the power windows, release two latches, and hit a switch, and an electric pump does the folding. The compressed top is covered by a soft boot. It's easy to install, but isn't very sturdy and doesn't quite fit the roof well. With the top down, the 240SX is extremely pleasing to the eye. The look is lean and low. Even the rear view, which tends to suffer when you chop the top, passes muster. Putting passive seat belts in a convertible is difficult, and we find this arrangement no more pleasing to see and use than others. Otherwise, this is one smart-looking ragtop, the first one offered by Nissan since the Datsun 2000 Roadster of 1970. The 240 convertible is powered by the same 2.4-liter 16-valve 4 that moves the hardtop 240SX. Its 155 horsepower and 160 pound-feet of torque reach the rear wheel by way of a four-speed automatic transmission. Unfortunately, a manual gearbox is not available. And we missed it at the track, where our test car couldn't do better than 10.6 seconds from 0 to 60, a full two seconds slower than our last manual 240. The quarter mile took 18.1 seconds at 78 miles per hour. It's hardly a slug, but we think that such a sporty-looking car should have the equipment to make full use of its available power. On the plus side, the engine is extremely smooth, with a very flat power band, and the transmission has a very refined feel. In corners, the 240 displayed a lot of body flex, despite extensive reinforcement. This resulted in heavier front plow and more abrupt transitions. But the SX's wonderfully grippy handling remains. You just have to work the wheel a bit harder for the same results. The automatic transmission made the car bog down a bit out of corners, but we could still sling the tail on demand. It was great fun. Braking was less encouraging. Our brand new test car's standard four-wheel disc stopped it from 60 and a long average of 140 feet. The right side locked frequently, and the pedal got soft as the disc heated up. Our test drivers attributed this to new pads that had not yet been properly bedded. ABS is not available. Once cooled, the brakes worked fine on the street, where we also found the body flex to be no more noticeable than most other modern convertible conversions. We were very pleased with the fuel mileage. EPA estimates are 21 city, 26 highway. We got 24 miles per gallon. The 240 convertible's cockpit offers a wealth of standard features like power locks, a tilt wheel, and cruise control. It's a direct carryover from the coupe and therefore retains both its good and bad qualities. The dash is handsome and features large, well-marked controls, but half of them hide behind the steering wheel. We've never cared for the 240's monoform foam seats. They lack comfortable support, but we all like the generous interior room. Gauges are large and well-marked, if a little sparse. No complaints, however, about the well-organized ventilation controls, and the standard cassette stereo is logical and easy to reach. Rear seat room remains as tight as ever, and the convertible top prevents the inclusion of the coupe's standard folding rear seat back. Trunk space is also reduced, though the high liftover cargo area is still sufficient for a weekend outing. Of course, before you can take that outing, you must first pay the $21,995 entry fee. 
add one option, air conditioning, and the price tops out at $22,845. You can have convertible fun for a lot less. The Mazda MX-5 Miata offers a manual transmission and options like ABS and a removable hardtop, but the Miata is only a two-seater with limited luggage space. In our safety check, the 240SX convertible passes with rear shoulder belts, but it lacks both airbags and ABS. Hits start with a sharp styling and easy to operate power top. We're also pleased with the high level of standard features, roomy interior, and the fact that Nissan was able to keep the 240's excellent handling mostly intact. On the miss side, there's too much convertible body flex for our taste. We'd also like a sturdier boot cover. It's also a shame that no manual transmission is available. Nissan only expects to produce about 6,000 240SX convertibles a year. With summer convertible demand being what it is, they should sell out quickly. It's summer cars like the Nissan 240SX convertible that makes the MotorWeek staff really appreciate their jobs. While not the perfect ragtop, it's fun, fast, comfortable, and reasonably affordable. And best of all, ASC's convertible conversion has not robbed Nissan's 240 chassis of the fine handling that has so endeared it to American drivers. The Nissan 240SX convertible offers plenty of both show and go in one slick entertaining package. That's a combination that we can live with all year long.